I was uh, born in Minden, Louisiana. Only lived there for a few months. We, my father was a railroad man and we moved to Shreveport when I was six years old. Worked in the family business when I was in high school and frankly I always assumed that I would wind up working uh, for what then was Shreveport Plumbing Company, which later became Berg Mechanical. Played uh, college football at SMU. Uh, had a knee injury that when I was a junior that ended all that. I do remember, and something should be said, that he was a Don Meredith Center at SMU. And Bob has described vividly, maybe too vividly, the uh, number of times Don Meredith has had his hands on Bob's rear end. But that's, that's another subject. <laughs> Then we used to call him, back in the 70s, we used to call him just forward thinkers. I mean, he was always trying to improve the way we did business. And back in those days, in the 70s, the contracting business was so unsophisticated. There were no computers and everything was manual. And Bob was always interested in technology and all the things that went along with improving the way that we did business. Bob's always been a champion of best business practices. He's, I know, worked really hard in Berg to always uh, train the uh, people who are part of the Berg team to be honest, to be for forthright, to do the job in the correct manner that it's called for. I think the, the uh, devotion of the Berg staff to Bob certainly helped. His leadership style was such that they would certainly go the extra mile. The most significant things in my life were surrounding myself with really good people. I never had a problem hiring somebody who was smarter than I was. And I've always, you know, we've always had great people who were really dedicated to doing a good job. And, uh, you know, they, they, made, they made my career and my work pretty easy. One of the things he did through the years was write a anniversary note to each, uh, each and every person that worked at Berg, office and field. And, and to this day, some of these tough foremen in the field uh, make note of that, that uh, every year they got a note. I think Bob is an honest man. He's a good man. He cares about people. He, he does things for the right reasons. Uh, every time I ever talked to Bob about his business, he, he talked about his employees and how wonderful they were and how hard they worked and what they deserved. It never was about Bob. Mm. I went to Dallas uh, to be one of the people to open a branch office over there, and that's where I met Celeste. Uh, we had a lot of mutual friends. She went to Bolton High School in Alexandria. We had a lot of mutual friends from high school and LSU, but I'd never met her. Uh, it's not very romantic. My roommate was dating his roommate, and we needed a fourth for bridge. So they came over and uh, I couldn't quit reading my book. I said, I'm sorry, this book is too good. <laughs> Come back again. In 58, 60, girls that weren't married by then were gonna be all maids. So, and my mother said I married a Yankee when I married somebody from North Louisiana. Cause I'm from Alexandria. He's devoted to his family. He, uh, he's devoted completely to Celeste and, and very proud of her and uh, cherishes her and there's no doubt about that. I'd say the only thing that's holding Bob Ham back from being a great chef and having his own uh, very palatial restaurant is the fact that Celeste would not afford him the budget to go out and do it in the manner that he needed to because with Celeste, she's going to keep him to the minimum price for that turkey and not let him get the really good turkey. Well, I, Bob is, is a got to be a pretty good husband. I think Celeste trained him really well. I think he's been well trained. I think that uh, he, he's raised a good family. He's got family in the business. He had family in the business and is uh, really the kind of guy that, that you can look up to as, as being an all-around good guy, a good father, and a good business person. Bob's just a family man. I, I, so many times I have, um, uh, he's told me about his kids or what the grandkids were doing. His pride and his, 
family, his sons and his daughter is so evident. And now his joy in his grandchildren is, he tells stories about them all the time at the office and, and very, very proud of all of them. I learned my trade from him and, and got to work with him for almost 15 years. So he, he, he's tough on himself about uh, the kind of father he was because of the hours he worked when we were little. But if, if my kids have the same relationship with me and my wife when, when we're old and they're adults, then I'll take that. Regardless of how tense the situation might have been in business, the morning, the afternoon, I remember Bob never shirked any of the civic responsibility he had undertaken. He showed up, he dealt with it with, with uh, absolute equanimity, despite what might have been going on outside those confines. I think Bob has been a, a great contributor to his fellow citizens of this region and to his community. Uh, he truly ha has a heart for serving others and uh, for helping others. And I've worked with him on a number of uh, different boards of civic and philanthropic organizations. He brings a lot of talent, a lot of good ideas. He's a good listener, uh, but he really does enjoy service. And I think that's one of the hallmarks of his life. He uh, does a lot for the community, thank goodness, since he's retired now. He goes to a committee meeting every day, Nellie. Junior Achievement uh, is sort of close to my heart. 25 years ago, my brother walked in the office one day and said, guess what, Berg is gonna sponsor a Junior Achievement company. And I said, what is that? And he said, you're gonna know real well pretty soon because you're gonna be the sponsor. I would encourage young people to, to find an endeavor for the rest of their life that they're passionate about, something that they feel strongly about, something that they feel they're making a contribution in doing. And it, you know, it's an old cliche that you should, you should find a career that you would do even if you didn't get paid for it. He's just a terrific guy and one of the closest friends I'll ever have in my life. He retired in May and it's been a, a kind of a transition for me, even not having him there to bounce things off of, I've missed him. I can think of little that it, were I to ask Bob to do, he wouldn't do. And for that matter, Celeste, but it's uh, a true friend. In my opening meeting with Bob, we had to settle anything. And, and he would always laugh with his big hearty laugh as he always did. And uh, so we hadn't to sell anything yet. Then one day I went over and I said, Bob, have we had to sell anything? He said, yep. I said, what? He said, the whole thing. We sold the business. And uh, I remember that meeting very well. And it was, it was a great honor to Bob that he had built such a, a wonderful business that people wanted to buy it. And uh, he knew that at that time his employees were taken care of, his family was taken care of, and mission accomplished. <music>